Hello everyone, I've been testing another thing out for a, a good week and a half now, and I have a, enough testing. Hello everyone, I am going to be releasing another thing courtesy of Dandaman827 today. Have you ever wanted to just go crazy and install every H mod out to the wazoo? Well check this out. I'm opening up RetroArch from the main user interface here. Go to low core. I have every H mod installed. And the problem with this is that you can't normally do this because you could pretty much fill up your internal NAND memory. You're limited to approximately 225 megabytes if you're on the SNES Classic, and around 330 megabytes if you're on the NES Classic. So I'm going to show you this new H mod that you can install, and I will go over the specifics and nuances of it for you. But I have all the H mods installed, and this uh, H mods is going to really help you be able to run multiple arcade cores because they take up the most space. But let me show you this in action on the computer. And I'll show you the H mod in the core set. And there's a few specifics you're going to have to really be careful about with this one. So I'm going to today's core set update. Extras, USB host, H mods. It is called Dandeman External RetroArch. And uh, when you copy this into your transfer folder, what it's going to do is going to copy the contents of your inter internal NAND memory to the flash drive. So you are essentially running the H mods from your flash drive. There are a couple of drawbacks to this though. One, it takes quite some time. It could take five to ten minutes to install in an inordinate amount of H mods. So you just have to be patient. You'll see the splash screen. You'll feel that you're stuck on it, but you really are not stuck on it. It could just take five to ten minutes to install. So I would take this external thing. I would go into the USB host drive, Hashi, make a transfer folder. And I would just turn on, and like I said, it could take 5 to 10 minutes to install everything. You'll have this longer splash screen than normal because it's transferring all the contents to your NAND memory. When you're done, you'll have a new libretto folder. And this has all the contents, as you see here. I'm on the SNES Classic and I have 329 to 452 megabytes of usage here, which is way beyond the internal flash memory. I have multiple samples, multiple cores. See, I have all the cores installed. Now, the one thing about this, if you want to un uninstall this, the best thing to do, the best way to uninstall this, I wouldn't use the uninstall file. You're better off, and I would strongly advise you back up your saves. I, I cannot guarantee saves are affected by this or not. Just always back up your saves. That's just a cardinal rule to follow anytime you're working with any modification whatsoever. Use the save state manager on Hashi2. Back up your saves. Just keep them in check. That way, if you do any modifications you don't like, you can go right back to uh, importing your saves and exporting the saves. But in any case, uh, the best way to do this would be open up Hashi2. And I'm just opening up Hashi 2 on my computer. And I've tested this out like multiple ways over the last week and a half. I'm going to my normal computer, opening up Hashi 2. And this is in the event that you would like to do an uninstall of everything. What you do is basically go into the Hashi tab. And you'd want to have the proper system type. Make sure it's set to NES or SNES, depending on what system you're working with. Then do the kernel uninstall. That's the best way you're going to be able to uh, clear everything out so that you could redo the process. And yes, you're going to have to redo Hashi 1 if you want to redo this. Because once the NAND memory copies over to the flash drive, there may be too much to be able to transfer back if you uninstall. You could use the uninstall file, but if you're over the NAND max capacity for flash memory, it will not be able to revert back to your... Uh, NES Mini or the SNES Mini, so you're pretty much going to break the ability to run into USB host. So I would recommend just 
uninstalling the kernel and just redoing the seriously don't you effing remember me process and uh, going back to what you want to do. So I would primarily recommend this course of action, this external modification, only for people who want to run multiple arcade cores. If you're running standard cores like SNES, Genesis Turbo Graphics, and all that, don't worry about it. But if you're running Final Burn Alpha 2016, all three main 2003 cores, multiple arcade samples, Final Burn Alpha 2012, then by all means do it. But if you're not running a crazy amount of arcade cores and just running like one MAME and one Final Burn Alpha 2016, you do not need this. You'll be w way within the realm of the limitations of the NAND memory. But uh, just remember, once you install it, the best thing to do is uninstall kernel and redo the seriously don't you effing remember me process. That's for the best. I've done this test a good 30 times to ensure it works and... Uh, like I said, back up your saves with the Save State Manager. If you go into Hacksheet 2, you go into Tools, Save State Manager. And I would do this before you do the Hacksheet process. This way you could properly connect through Clover Shell. But it'll be in today's Core Set update. I've been testing it for a good week and a half now. Hope you enjoy the release. You'll also have the Intellivision emulator as well as the ability to do three MAME 2003 cores at the same time. So the release will be shortly.